Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan. This is the Android App Show episode number 72. This week, we have some Google versus Microsoft drama to discuss. Welcome to the Android App Show. everybody well this is crazy today yeah we are uh we are marching forward with the uh <laughs> with the awesomeness <laughs> the uh, first yeah. debut of the new studio configuration yeah i i kind of like it it's kind of cool believe it or not this is actually the same space yeah oh shoot i just finished doing the names the right way on the lower thirds last time <laughs> and now they're, and they're different again. again yeah that's how we do it well this is lane yeah and i am dave the crisscross draw lines yes okay so uh some pretty amazing stuff going on this week yeah. um there's i'm kind of excited to get into this but i like uh covering the minutia of all the the back and forth because on if you're a frequent listener to this podcast you know uh we've done a lot of complaining about patents yes and uh what it, what it's really doing to the android ecosystem or at least mm-hmm. the future of the android ecosystem uh, so we've got a lot of juicy, juicy news to talk about <laughs> for that this week. Um, juicy. But we do have a sponsor. Uh, oh, we do, don't we? We have somebody that's helping us pay the bills around here. It's Carbonite Online Backup again this week. Uh, automatically back up your files to an online secure server with Carbonite Backup. It works on, of course, Mac and PC. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about how much space uh, your backup requires because why, Dave? Because it's unlimited. Totally unlimited. So uh, in case uh, a last-minute disaster happens or something like that, uh, all of your media files, everything you bought on iTunes, everything's magically uh, pushed up onto Carbonite server. Mm-hmm. So uh, you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So what I am uh, worried about is stressful. Right? Then you can worry about little things like not having reflections in your monitor. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> it's so tricky. Uh, backup again. It's it is very stressful, but when you have access to all your files from an Android, iPhone, BlackBerry phone, uh, to restore them back to download them anywhere, uh, it really takes a lot off your mind. Especially you know when you're running a business, you're just getting started, uh, or if you're an artsy person that likes you know mixing up music and uh, you know working in Photoshop and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You lose it one day. That's a lot of templates. That's uh, a lot yeah. of stuff to lose. So. That's not uh, good. Visit Carbonite.com. Uh, usually they have just a 14-day free trial. Uh, but with this promo code, you can get two months for free. Uh, you just go there and click the big green button that says learn more and enter the code TPN. Uh, and that stands for Tech Podcast Network. So that is TPN. And you get two months for free. So pretty good stuff. Plus we'll have a link in the show notes uh, in case you get lost. You can just click on the link and that'll bring you there. Enter in the promo code. You're good to go. So. <laughs> Stretch in there. It's creaky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, we have some app reviews to cover this week. Yeah, we do. Uh, some good stuff. Yeah. I, I like these apps that you picked out this week. Some right. interesting stuff, I like to think. They're kind of cool. Um, like my first one is one that we've already reviewed before. It's called Ozzy's Odyssey. Uh, they changed it up a little bit. Uh, if you look back to episode 42, which was 30 episodes ago, if you can believe that, uh, then you'll find uh, the beta for this. And it was called like Odyssey Droid Odyssey Beta or something like that. So uh, go ahead and, and check that out. Uh, right now it's priced at a buck ninety nine, And the stats online are showing between 1,000 and 5,000 installs. So uh, pretty good stuff. But I lost my HDMI cable. I don't know where it's at. So we're going to go ahead and do app reviews up on the old school gadget cam that's now totally new school. New and improved. <laughs> uh, so let's see. There's the, the little logo with the dot on top. I mentioned this before in the review that I did uh, last time for the beta. Uh, but this looks like the uh, bad robot icon. 
Oh, it does. So, and I let my kids play this, so I lost all the uh, epis- all the <laughs> levels that I beat. <laughs> um, but it's kind of cool. Uh, they have individual levels, and the goal of this thing is to uh, walk back and forth. You can't jump, and use the platforms and stuff they give you, and and not die. So, let's drop down here, pick up batteries. Batteries are what give you points throughout the level. Uh, you, the more batteries you collect, the better off you are. Uh, and there's this little switch here. I threw that, and all of a sudden that platform up there started moving. So it's pretty much like a puzzle game uh, where you have very limited movement. Um, so you figure out all these things. There we go. Drop down on the platform. Ooh. Now, see, this barrel is clear over there. Uh, but I got a feeling I need to pick it up. Yeah. So there's like a green ray over here on the left side. You hit that. Mm-hmm. It'll send out a thing and and suck up the... Like a tractor beam. Yeah. So I'm going to drop it down here. Huh. Huh. Push it down there. It slides down that part and down here. Hits this other switch. Let's me fall down here. Oh, yeah, we don't have the HDMI out, so we, we don't have level. great music right now. Oh, that's so true. That's okay. I can turn it up a little bit. Maybe we'll get some in the background. Loading. Leap of faith. There we go. So this one's a quick elevator. And you got to pay attention there because you can see all those batteries when you fall. And this one's kind of interesting. It has a series of platforms that you got to use to get across and if you mess up you die but they get pretty uh the game gets pretty advanced some of the higher levels have uh like reverse uh gravity switches uh so that you have to since obviously the guy can't jump uh there's just very uh particular ways to get through a level when it's upside down so kind of stretches the imagination a little bit that's crazy I have to find the key. Which of the keys is like way up at the top or something. Now that the video quality is a little better, we both have to like start getting manicures. Yeah. <laughs> I think me more than you. You're not too bad. I keep mine, mine uh, pretty short. That's good. So I'm going to pick up this key. I used to play guitar a lot, so it was just a good habit. Yeah. I used to be stressed a lot. <laughs> oh, wait, I still am. So let's see. I'll get to this last platform, which is going to take me all the way up. Take them up, boys. And that key I picked up works yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. And it drops me over here magically. Oh, man. And out the level. Magic. So... And if you uh, if you get stuck, you pretty much have to wander around until you figure out what the next thing is you have to get. They don't really have hints, but that's what mm. makes it a good puzzle game. Yeah. Here's a reverse uh, gravity one. And see, the thing about this, like, you think, why didn't you go up there? Well, you got to get these batteries, and then you got to go back down and hit the switch again because you can't get those batteries when the gravity's on. Mm. And the batteries are points. So, pretty good stuff. Uh, but there, there's basically just tons, tons more uh, levels than what there were on the beta. Yeah. Uh, they cleaned up some of the uh, problems with the the guy moving. I felt like uh, when we reviewed it before, sometimes your finger would be right on the button and it would kind of uh, stick up a little bit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It would it would stop moving and or it wouldn't respond like it should. So, that kind of... Uh, it's annoying pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. As does this. <laughs> what did you do? They have a good way of, of syncing up all your time. <laughs> or taking it all up, you know what I mean? Oh, boy. Because huh. you got to get these little batteries everywhere. Mm. Will he make it? Oh, you made it. And I'll drop this down here. Oh. What 
you do that? Now I can go out. Oh, so, pretty fun stuff. Uh, for a buck ninety nine, again, there's just tons and tons of little puzzle levels. It's easy to get lost into, so I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, it's come a long way. I like the idea when it was in the beta, uh, and they've definitely refined it. That's so cool. It's worth a buck ninety nine. Very nice. So how can you believe that? Thirty episodes ago is when I reviewed that last. Really? Thirty episodes. It does not feel like that. I know I looked it up. I was like, "What was it? episode forty-two? And we're on seventy-two now." That was thirty now. ago. Yeah, we're on seventy-two now. It's amazing. Bang! So, uh, my next app review here is going to be for uh, a, a game that's uh, it's it kind of bends the mind. It's a mix between this game that I just reviewed, uh, Ozzy's Odyssey, and Galataxi, the one I reviewed last time. Mm, yeah. Uh, so this one is called "They Need to Be Fed." Mm. So an interesting little uh, quirky title. <laughs> I think I'll exit out of it so we can get the full. It's a cool little loading experience. Oh yeah, with the blackout. <laughs> they have a they have a nice logo. Ninety six cents for that bad boy. Good deal too. That's a good deal. They should be charging more for this game. Yeah. Uh, and what's the other one? The the ink one, the blob ones that was for Wii, and they have it on iPhone now. Oh, World of Goo or yes. something? Yes, yeah. kind of looks like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so you have these different worlds here. They start you out on one, and it goes up to seven. Uh, basically, when you first start out, it's to get you used to the control. So you have left and right on your left side, and you run around each one of these blocks. <laughs> and then a jump button on the right... It jumps out. And I say it's kind of like Galataxi because each one of these blocks has their own field of gravity. And you'll notice as you jump out like that, you can go over and be sucked over into the other block. But it, the thing is, moving left and right depends on the relation of these squares to his head. So if he's upside down and you want to move him to the right, you press left. Oh. So you kind of have to get your brain around... Uh, him always turning in different ways, but the controls are so simple. It's only left and right Yeah, so kind of brings it to that next level the goal of each one of these levels is to collect as many Diamonds as possible uh, and then you'll get little markers like this that will save your place in case you run into a spike and die It kind of saves you right there so you can get over it And then let the guy eat you because they need to be fed Oh, I get it. <laughs> so then you have all kinds of other crazy obstacles Whoa. like these spike balls here. And you have oh, to yeah. jump out now and get them because, of, you know, they don't just automatically suck up towards you. The diamonds. Huh. Like that. And if you get all the diamonds and you get through it without respawning, then you'll get a star. See, now they introduce moving items, and then they'll uh, introduce some that don't move, but only move when you land on them. They start turning, and then they'll have spikes on them and all kinds of other uh, good crap. So. How positive. Yeah. I'm trying all to. sorts of good crap. I'm oh. trying to get it back to the level Well, oh, that's not good. Yo, yo. So, uh, you have achievements that you can earn here. Oh, this is the options. You go into achievements for when you get a certain amount of diamonds and you unlock worlds because the more diamonds you collect, then you can go to the higher levels. Uh, but then they have some cool ones. Uh, let's see. You get uh, seven stars in world one. Like, all well, the, yeah, for perfect when you finish them out. But then here's one that's called Empty Handed One Complete World 2 2 without diamonds. And they have a couple of them that are interesting that it's pretty hard to complete it without getting a diamond. So they make it an achievement. Uh, complete one one without walking. So like different levels that you can only jump off the surface and then move in the air and land. Oh. And then jump off and move. You can't walk around anything. <laughs> so uh, and then some silly ones and uh, feed a hundred monsters and then get all the diamonds and get all the stars. So in this game I did beat the entire thing. So, 
Uh, it is doable, Dave. You should be able to. No, I keep hitting I like back. It. That's one thing. It doesn't capture the back button like it should. Uh, he always wants you to hit these things. Okay. So, let's come up here and show you the very final level. They have this laser beam that comes and kills you. Oh. So, you have to race it. It's a race against time to beat the level. And it is not an easy <coughs> level to beat. I see that. Spikes and craziness everywhere. So this should give you a good uh, oh. array of what's on here. No These way. ones explode. What the? So you can only be on them for so long. Oh no, but I don't want him to eat me because that's just the first checkpoint. You can tap out there if you want. Oh my gosh. You got to keep on running. You got to get going, man. So let's get through the oh. Oh 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 oh. Laser's coming. Now this one's moving. And then there we go. Whoa. That's all the diamonds on the last level. So you can run and tell that. <laughs> <laughs> so again, this is uh they need to be fed. It's 96 cents on the uh, on the market, and I like this game. I like it a lot. That's cool. It's not, it looks enjoyable. <laughs> it looks really simple and like I like how it's just cool. You do a couple. Yeah, things it's the controls it's are easy. It's games like this that they it's easy to learn but hard to master. You yeah. know, and it's making that switch in your brain all the time with which way the guy's looking. You know, <laughs> so it's it's good stuff. It's definitely a challenge. Cool. So those were our app reviews this week. Uh, what do we have coming up next? Well, we have news. Ooh, we have some big news. Yeah. In case you've been hiding underneath a rock. I have. I have. Uh, Microsoft and Google have been fighting a very public fight this week <laughs> over uh, who did what and who said what as far as bidding on patents. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. It's almost like the uh, the you know political silly season we all complain about is now bleeding over into corporations <laughs> and it's fun because you know corporations are always so you know stodgy and you know nobody's flying off the handle making statements and that they have to later retract <laughs> was, or apologize for it was a, a little crazy yeah so it was you know like you get some new person and just shooting from the hip mm -hmm. um but just to give you a little rundown in case you haven't heard uh it's been beat to death this week, of course, and we've been covering patent problems a lot lately, so you might be completely tired of hearing about this, um, but believe me, it's worth it. Uh, it's good stuff. Uh, Google was outbid by a consortium of tech companies uh, for a group of patents being sold from the now defunct uh, Novell. Defunct. Yes. Uh, the consortium that was out, uh, the consortium that outbid them was formed by Apple, Microsoft, RIM, and Sony, uh, with a few other companies. Uh, Google needed or just, you know, wanted, depending on who you talk to, these patents uh, to be used as a uh, mutually assured destruction threat to help protect Android from IP lawsuits from other competing firms. So and we've been seeing a lot of that lately, uh, different companies being sued uh, with the load sys problem that we had. Yeah. The, well, that had it's still going on. Uh, Apple saying we protect our developers. Uh, and that's going to have to go to court. But Google doesn't even protect their developers. They don't really have patents to fight these things off with. Yeah. And that's where uh, this whole thing has been kind of instigated from. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of great drama going on this week, going back and forth between Google and Microsoft on the politics of this deal uh, that Google lost out on. It boils down to Google admitting that they wanted these patents for lawsuit defense. Uh, they don't like playing the game like this, but I guess uh, that's how they're being forced to compete. Uh, well, to remain competitive is to actually acquire some intellectual property to beat back other people. So uh, now the government is going to be investigating whether uh, these patents, uh, like whether the consortium was formed uh, to form an IP cartel and if that's legal or not. Mm. Because essentially these companies got together and are... Uh, setting up a price barrier for an entry to the market. Uh, the purpose of the patents as written into the Constitution is to promote innovation. And frankly, when you set up a cartel like this where you have to pay a certain fee in order to become an innovator in the market, 
that's that's a barrier. Yeah. And uh, when it's collusion between different companies, you know, forming this organization to do it, is that fair? Is it uh, is it the American way, as they say? <laughs> so that's up for debate, and that's what this argument's all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's usually companies again; they have the IP portfolio, so they are on the side of no, no, it should be protected. But we have a new company like this now that is just uh, they didn't play the game the way the old players play it. Yeah. And now the old players are using the force of law to come after them. So, and it's funny because it's the force of law in the United States, but in places like Europe, there are no software patents. And in yeah. fact, there weren't software patents in the United States until the Supreme Court forced the patent office to accept them because the patent office previously qualified them as languages and languages can't be patentable. They can only be copyrighted. Hmm. So I know it's a lot of mumbo jumbo. So uh, the long and the short of it is Google's finally taking the patent threat against Android seriously. Uh, I think that uh, fragmentation is so 2010 that the new uh, meme for Android is uh, patent lawsuits. So look forward to hearing plenty more on that. <laughs> Especially wait. the next big deal is Interdigital. Uh, they have a, a patent portfolio coming up for bid. Uh, this one looks like it might be a free-for-all with companies competing for the patents instead of forming a consortium because I don't know uh, Samsung's dipping their toe into this now. And uh, a lot of these, I think... Uh, with Google standing back and with them losing, it's forcing the hardware makers to step up and say, mm-hmm. "All right, we're going to protect our own selves." You know, uh, Google isn't protecting them. So, uh, mm-hmm. when you have more people in there bidding for this fixed amount of yeah. uh, goods, psh, the price is going to go up even higher. So, we might see uh, five billion or more, uh, especially since uh, since this interdigital patent portfolio is larger than even the uh, Nortel or the Novell uh, patent auctions that just happened. So, Mm. good stuff. Like I said, you're going to hear plenty more. I have a video from uh, TechCrunch, uh, which does pretty good uh, at delving into this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check out the show notes, uh, there's a link down there Cool. uh, at the end of uh, this section or the big news section. So keep on your toes about this, folks. It's, Mm -hmm. uh, It's going down. It's important. <laughs> yeah. 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 Apple's protected though. So you don't have to worry, Dave. They, uh, they got their sides covered and <laughs> <laughs> they're still reaching out to try and dominate the world. So we'll see how it turns out. Yeah. So I guess on to some quick news. Uh, we have some, uh, Android app related quick news to throw at you in case, uh, you're still here after hearing the long, boring patent. <laughs> it wasn't boring. You know, it's exciting to me. Uh, we have a map of the Android iOS uh, civil war in the United States now. Uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of funny. I put it up on on Docs, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't pull it up on mine. But it's pretty interesting. It shows that in the West and in the South, there are uh, a, there's a lot of domination of Android. Yeah, and, like it showed iOS is a very Midwest kind of thing. Yeah, in the Upper East. Yeah. So the northeast, not the upper east. East side. <laughs> I think I might have had the wrong the link. Oh, I clicked on the wrong link. That's why. There it is. And these gray states that you see here on the screen are Blackberry dominated states. North and South Dakota, uh, Oregon. Really? Yep. Kansas, Virginia. South Carolina and New York are dominated by BlackBerry. That's messed up, man. So some surprising, uh, surprising things there. And uh, looks like Nevada and Utah, they don't cell phones, Oklahoma. Yeah, they're neutral. There's no uh-huh. leader that's broken out. Huh. So in the, some of the southeast. So Android is leading in those areas. Yeah, Android is the yellow, and then the blue, Montana, Weird. Louisiana. Looks like the Midwest pretty much, and the Northeast up here. Are all iPhone. I would have thought the complete opposite, actually. Yeah, who knows? Well, you know, I'm, it feels I'm like an Android guy right here in the middle of blue too. <laughs> I know, but it feels like I mean, it feels like the iPhone is much more trendy and would be like a like I don't know more of a status symbol on the coast. You know what my theory is? The AT and T coverage is so bad out here on the coast. <laughs> that they don't use People it. People are just and then abandoned up here in the Northeast. 
AT&T has probably got a fairly good network in the Midwest. 3G is not that great, but nobody really complains so much about the network being so bad as they do in New York and California. Yeah, but AT&T is based in Texas. So, mm. yeah, That's they've weird. lost they've lost their home state. Oh. That's right, cuz AT&T is owned by SBC now, right? Maybe. Or what used to be SBC. I don't know. Might be the other way around. I have no idea. It's too complicated. Yeah. The bells got back together, folks. Mm-hmm. So who can keep track of it? Uh, another thing, the first remix Honeycomb UI has come out. It's from Samsung, and it's called Touch Wiz UX instead Wiz-a-wiz. of UI. So it's like uh, many of the phones that we've reviewed before, they have the Touch Wiz UI. Uh, this just, frankly, it makes it look, uh, Honeycomb look a little bit less droid robot-y and a little mm. bit more Windows preschooly. <laughs> And not in such a bad way. Like the arrows aren't like a V and blue. It's an arrow. arrow. You know, it's, yeah. I don't know. They did some tweaks, uh, some really cool, uh, what do you call them? Widgets, you know, that you guys yeah. don't have on yeah. iOS. Yeah. So almost like live panels. So I guess that interface is uh, winning out on Android. Hmm. So, and some bad news, uh, Android is the least open source of all mobile platforms. Wait, what? <laughs> yes, of all open mobile platforms. Oh, open Android platforms. is the least open source. Ah, that's so, weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, sure, Android's open source, but it's developed in secret. Yes. See, and the code is only released when Google wants to, unless it's GPL or LGPL. And then they release that, like, right away. But that's not the main part of Android. So, yeah. um. One of the other things that we have going on, that new Firefox, the boot to Gecko. Yeah. Uh, that would be pretty cool. That's going to be developed all in the open. And they're targeting Android based phones, mm-hmm. you know, so that they can uh, have like a common platform to develop from. So mm-hmm. Android is sort of homogenizing the hardware system out there. And Mozilla is saying, okay, then we'll start something that is built on the homogenized Android base. Hmm. And have it boot to Gecko and show them how to, how it's done. That's cool. So pretty pretty cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see. Uh, new Android Tether control app for Canon DSLR cameras. Oh, dude. So I figured that you might be uh, pretty excited about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to have a, a phone that supports host USB functions. Uh-huh. Uh, so that like your charging port or whatever isn't just a you know a receiving end here. Uh, you could actually plug something in and have it either charge another device from this device yeah. or con- connect to this device like remote attached storage or or yeah. however. You know, they have communications and stuff in the API yeah. uh, to do this as well. Uh, and so that's how this guy uh, made an app that you can actually control uh, your DSLR with touch focus using your phone uh, well, it's, or tablet because... See, they're saying that the only phone that it works on right now is the Sam is the uh, Nexus S two. So, but if you have a Honeycomb tablet, you can plug it into that. You get touch focus, a histogram uh, for color, uh, bulb capture, and many other you know basic camera functions. Well, that's cool. So you can tripod your camera up, plug it right into your tablet, and yeah. control it all from right there. It's really good. I've seen that used a lot for like when people are shooting weddings. Yeah. They put one like up, like right up on the stage somewhere, so then you don't have to go up there and walk around and get like right up in the, yeah, the thing. You can just kind of set it up and, yeah. And it's, there's some other apps you might have heard of some of these controllers for DSLR, yeah. but those require an actual computer to yeah. run the host tether. on. Yeah, to tether to. This is just straight into straight from the phone uh, the Honeycomb tablet. Now that's cool. So good stuff. Uh, we have a, a a market install link up on the show notes. So if you have a Honeycomb tablet and a DSLR camera, you can go ahead and check that out. Is it just Canon DSLR? Yeah, there's uh, on the uh, details for the install for the app. It has a list of specific oh, okay. models that it supports and everything. So definitely make sure to check that out. Mm-hmm. I believe it's an eight or nine dollar app. So the mm-hmm. guy is uh, he's put some specific work into a I mean a, into a very small niche. So. Yeah. Uh, I can see why you would charge a little bit more for it because it's it's also pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. 
Uh, so I think that should cover it for us for the news this week. Uh, it's everything I wanted to talk about anyway. I talked quite a bit. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you really got the... Well, we took a week off, so I guess I had a lot of things on my chest to uh, mm-hmm. to get off. A lot of things to cover. So uh, if you want to find out more, uh, watch more of these episodes, uh, yeah. get links out to all of our apps, social networks, uh, you can go to the com. So mm-hmm. we have all kinds of cool little white icons along the top to install uh, your uh, install our app right to your phone and watch the podcast right on there. You know, don't ever have to worry about uh, where it's at and some other subscription thing or whatever. Boom, video and audio and show notes. Yeah, so it's beautiful. And if you want more updates from us, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, it's pretty simple. All it is at Android App Show on Twitter, and uh, we'll kind of. Get those messages as they come in, and uh, if we don't like your message, we won't respond, yeah. or we'll ignore it, and we'll say <laughs> something funny. But usually we only yeah. ignore uh, spam. Yes. So if it's spam, it's out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we like receiving messages on Twitter. Uh, we also are doing a lot on YouTube, uh, uploading full episodes to YouTube. You can follow our channel. We're up to just over 300 subscribers on YouTube. That's cool. So uh, youtube.com slash the Android app show. Of course, that means you can also watch it on your YouTube app if you subscribe to us. So, yeah. right on your phone. All kinds of different distribution channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of distribution channels, we are a member of the Blueberry Podcast Network. Yeah. That's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Uh, what is it like you, you like to say about them, Dave? Uh, they're, like the, they're like the minor leagues of <laughs> entertainment. Yes. And we're proud to be amongst the minor leagues. Still... Still high quality. Well, minor leagues are more the fun. they're the ones to watch. I yeah. like our minor league closest team is the Lansing Lug Nuts. You got the cup right over there, man. Yes. Go nuts, Lansing Lug Nuts. Hey, yeah. <laughs> so you know because they try hard. Yeah, and but, it's fun. Yeah, and the beer is cheaper. Let's face it, <laughs> <laughs> at the minor leagues than it is at the majors. Summer shanty. Yeah, yeah. They have it up there at the uh, yeah. All of the. I went to Pizza Hut the other day, and they had summer shanty at Pizza Hut, and I was amazed. I was amazed. So, <laughs> I love summer, if for nothing else than the summer shanty. <laughs> so we also have a review coming up today. Let's see what we got here on the table. This bad boy. This Dude. is the uh, the LG review, or no, the LG. I'm drawing a blank on it. Revolution something i have it written down on my tech show notes can't believe i'm spacing on the name it's the lg r something but this uh you know for a good comparison yeah it's revolution lg revolution 4g uh for a good comparison uh you're looking at it right here the evo so this one's made by lg this one's by htc uh but same size screen front facing camera high definition you know, video shooter on the back with yeah. a five megapixel camera. My Evo has an eight, but you know, megapixels only matter so much. Yeah. But uh, they have this little custom UI on top of it too. But if you want to watch this review, of course, uh, look up the Android Tech Show. Uh, we have an app on the market as well. So. Very cool. That's fun. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is like the, this is like the best copy of, the, uh, HTC Evo I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. So, and that's they that do is saying something. Of course, similar. it's my phone, so it has the HDMI out. It does everything. That's cool. So good stuff. All right. So check out that. You show won't want to miss that. <laughs> cool. All right, everybody. I think that's pretty much it for this week. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, and thanks for uh, sticking with us in the new studio here as we get things kind of <laughs> moved around. A few more you, you can't, to work out. You can't really see behind the camera. You don't want to see that. Like later on, when it's all finished and it looks pretty, maybe we'll should do, I do like a, a sweeping thing should around I do a here. Quick, a quick pan shot on here. Sure. Just flash it real quick. Oh, that was just part. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> oh, <laughs> I turned the, cam- the camera got unplugged. We so, so good times. Yeah. It is a mess in here, but not for you guys because you can see us clearly. 
And we clearly know it's time to end the show now. Yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch more work to do. Yes. More, more shows. More shows. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Where's the button? Yay. <laughs>